see Los Angeles. Let's get ready to praise God. Are you ready, church? Come on. Help me out like this. With... Hey. He's the faith. We sing it out. I'll praise in the valley. I'll praise on the mountain. Father, for who you are, Lord. We just continue to give you all the praise that you're worthy of, Lord. Lord, we thank you for being a God who loves us, who cares for us so much, Lord, who desires to, to be in fellowship with us and in contact with us 24-7, Lord. You ask us to pray about all things, Lord, and to worry about nothing. God, our hearts, we want to be like Mary, Lord. In the midst of it all, Lord, in the, in the midst of all the craziness, we want to fall at your feet, Lord, and pour out what costs us most, Father. 
Lord, we know there's distraction everywhere right now, God, but we are going to be found at your feet. You receive it, Lord, all the honor, all the glory, all the praise that is due to your mighty name, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me, for me, for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Let's sing it out, church. Come on. Oh, rock, oh, rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. on the God of Mary, whose favor rests upon the Lord. I know, I know with you all things are possible. I'm calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy courageous. Face Goliath, but I've got my own giants. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh, I go out the ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. You heard your children, you hear your children, you are the same God, you are the same God, you answered prayers back then, and you will answer now, you are the same God, you are the same God. We're providing then, you are providing now, you are the same God, you are the same God, you moved in power then, God moved in power now, you are the same God, you are the same
Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 34, taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the person who takes refuge in Him? You who are His holy ones, fear the Lord. For those who fear Him lack nothing. If you fear the Lord, the promise is you will lack nothing. Young lions lack food and they go hungry, but those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. Those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. We're going to receive communion this morning and you can grab your emblems and please stay standing with me. My name is Luke, Luke Taylor. I'm from Hope You See Australia. I don't know. I don't know if the accent's sticking out a little bit too much this morning. Hey, mate, it's good to be in the house with you this morning. But uh, I've got a little bit of confession time. Am I in a safe place? Do you have grace for me this morning? Uh, you know, you wake up really early when you're on creative team. And you, you know, so you get up, you might have a little snack in the morning, a bit of breakfast. Honestly, if you're singing, I don't like to eat too much before I'm going to sing. And... Um, then, you know, you get to the second song, communion time, and I look down at that little emblem and the juice, and I think, oh, a mid-service snack. <laughs> All right, uh, look, am I the only unholy one here, right? You're like, oh, great, we're going we're gonna to have a little snack. It's going to get me through the Word, and then as soon as the service is over, right, we're hitting the coffee bar or go out afterwards, grab some food. And, All right. And we joke this morning, we laugh at that, but, you know, there's something in the, of the human condition. We find ourselves in a place of consistent hunger, right? Cons- you, you ate yesterday, but you're hungry again this morning, right? You, you might have been eating healthy all week. It still wasn't good enough. You find yourself Sunday lunchtime, you need to eat again. You need to eat again. And we find this from the first breath we take here on earth. We're hungry. I've got a little 18-month-old Banksy. She's the sweetest thing you've ever seen. And um, I remember her, her birth... She's crying and all she wanted was to nurse at her mother. And it was the sweetest thing ever, but she she was born hungry. She was born hungry. And this natural hunger speaks to a spiritual hunger, right? When you get hungry, and I love that uh, we practice this in my house, we pray before we eat dinner together, right? Because there's something about the physical that speaks to a a supernatural, a, a spiritual truth. Every human on planet Earth is spiritually hungry for something. And the only satisfaction we find for that spiritual hunger is in Christ. Amen. And all throughout the Word, all throughout the Word, we see God providing physical food for His people and at the same time providing that spiritual food. In the desert, the Israelites wandered and they had manna from heaven. In the New Testament, Jesus is on a hillside and He provides, uh, multiplies bread and fishes, loaves for His people there. And later on in that same chapter, right after He's provided on the mountain, in John chapter 6, He he shares with His disciples this deeper spiritual truth of our spiritual hunger. And He says this, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes from heaven so that anyone may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he or she will live forever. And the bread that I will give is for the the life of the world. It is my flesh. He goes on to say a few verses later. So Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you will not have life in yourself. For the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the manna your ancestors ate and they died. For the one who eats this bread will live forever. You know, you might be the most healthy person in this room. You eat carrots on the daily, lettuce, And sorry to break it to you, but we'll still get to the end of this life and die. You might live a few extra than others. Well done. But the Word says you've got to feast on the life of Christ. And that might be mixing some metaphors and you think, oh gosh, are we vampires in this house? We're saying to receive and participate in the life of Christ. And this morning we hold the emblems. 
this little wafer and juice representing the body and the blood of Jesus. And, and Jesus asked us to repeatedly perform this action to remind us, you will be hungry tomorrow. This wafer will not sustain you in a physical sense, but what it represents, Jesus' blood and His body. If you will feast on Him, if you will make Him your goal and your end and your, your focus, you will be satisfied. The Psalm said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Anyone who fears the Lord will lack nothing. If He is everything to you, then you have everything you need. So we receive these emblems this morning and we thank Him and we praise Him. And we're going to sing a song about the precious blood of Jesus this morning. And as we sing, I want you to receive these emblems and make this song your prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
satisfy You satisfy the longing in our hearts, God You satisfy You satisfy and generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb and all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb Your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name it stands above them all above all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name it stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation
Father, again, we thank you for who you are, Lord, the same God now and forever, holy forever, Lord. Father, we trust you, and this morning, Lord, we place our trust in you, Lord, and we pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, to a point of overflow, Lord, so that everyone we walk past, Lord, they're affected by you, Lord. They know, Lord, that we're carrying the scent of Christ, Lord. Let your will be done, Lord, in all the details of our lives, Lord. We love you, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys. Why don't we greet one another and we'll get into the word in just a moment. Welcome home, church. I'm Pastor John. Whether you're joining us online or in the building, I am so glad that you're here with us today. If you're in the building for the very first time, we'd love to meet you. So make sure you stop by the hub after the service. We have a special gift for you. If you're joining us online, make sure you fill out the digital connect card in the chat right here, and we'll make sure we get that gift to you. We are just getting started. So get ready because it is going to be a great service. And I know God has something special just for you. Good morning, church. Hey, let's give it up for the worship team one time, y'all. My name is Brian Romero. I'm the youth and kids director here at Hope UCLA, along with my wife, Nicole. And it is our honor and privilege to receive the tithes and offerings here today. And we have many ways to give. You could give online on our website at hopeucla.com. You can give on the Hope You See LA app, or you can give at this thing right here called one of our many generosity locations across the building. And you see, there's a story in the Bible where four friends take their paralyzed friend to Jesus. Jesus is in town. He's preaching inside of a house and it's so packed that you can't even get inside of the house, right? You can't even get in close proximity to Jesus. Plus, the Pharisees are blocking the door. It's just incredibly difficult to get inside the house. So the four friends decide to go grab their friend, right? They go up on the roof, they break through the roof and they get them to the feet of Jesus and their friend gets healed, right? Those are some amazing friends and you're probably thinking to yourself right now, Brian, how does this story relate to our tithes and offerings? And I'm glad that you asked, right? I believe those, I believe there's people in this room today whose finances are paralyzed. You're stuck, you can't move, you're depressed, you're worried, you're scared, you're stressed, and you can't even make a single move, right? You see, two months ago, I was up here and I shared with you guys that me and Nicole, our finances were in that situation. Our finances were paralyzed, but we stayed faithful to our tithes and our offerings, and, but because it was attached to the grace of our Father. And in our financial situation, we saw that same healing that the paralyzed man saw that day. You see, we experienced the grace of God in our lives, right? So they went to go get their friends. So I wanna come today and come and get my friends. All of you guys here today, you see, if your finances are paralyzed today, I want to be one of those four friends for you guys today. I want you to experience the same grace, the same healing, because one of those four friends, they saw the healing of Jesus, and that was the faith that got them to the friend of Jesus. So I know right now, I know while Jesus was preaching in that house, there was no room to get around, right? And right now, in your guys' mind, there might be obstacles of what you need to do to get to this generation, to this generosity location, right? So Jesus tells the man to stand up, right? And he says, your friend's faith has healed you, right? Your friend's faith has healed you. So it might be a very difficult spot for you to get to this generosity location. Your car payment might be getting in the way. Your mortgage might be getting in the way. Religion might be getting in the way, right? It might be very difficult to get here, but Jesus said your friend's faith has healed you today. So attach your faith 
to my faith as my faith is attached to the grace of God. Because when you break through the generosity location, there will be breakthrough in your finances today. In Jesus' name. I love you, church. Let's watch church news. Starting Sunday, April 21st, we are returning with our next crash course, How to Operate in the Gifts of the Spirit. Join us for this empowering class as we learn how to activate our spiritual gifts and align ourselves with the Holy Spirit. You can sign up for Crash Course today at the Hub or on the app. Hello, parents. This is just a reminder that Unlimited Summer Camp registration is happening between services today in the church lobby. All students entering the sixth grade up to graduating seniors are invited. Unlimited Summer Camp is taking place from Friday, June 21st through Sunday, June 23rd in the beautiful mountains of Santa Barbara. If you would like to sponsor a child, well, please meet us in the church lobby right after service. Stay connected by following us on Facebook and Instagram at Hope You See Los Angeles. For more info and all things Hope You See, you can visit us online at hopeyousee.com. Well, welcome home, church. How's everybody doing out there today? You guys are blessed to be in church today. Come on, whether you're in the building or online, we're so glad uh, that you're worshiping with us today. So good to have our dear friend, Pastor Luke from Hope You See Australia with us this weekend. He was at the gathering with us this week in Santa Fe, and man, we just had an incredible time uh, in Santa Fe at our Hope You See gathering. We said, hey, we're going to steal. You got to come back through LA to get to Australia, so stop along the way, amen. And uh, so we're gr uh, honored to have him here. We just had such an incredible time uh, at the gathering. It was such an incredible move of God over this past week. Hopefully, uh, if you didn't make it in person, we had over 50 people from Hope You See LA. Come on, come out. Uh, to Santa Fe. Hopefully you got to tune in online to the night services, and it was just a powerful uh, time together. Next year, uh, the gathering is coming to Nashville, Tennessee. Come on. I know some of you are all looking like, all right, I'll go. Um, maybe Santa Fe, I was borderline, but uh, I'll make my way to Nashville. Uh, uh, Mar uh, May? May 7th to 9th. Come on, no excuses. Put it in your calendar now. May 7th to 9th. Get your flight tickets now, not at the last minute, right, April? And uh, come on. And you'll find a way there and you won't have to drive there. Amen. Yeah. April. Yep. Well, uh, I, I'm excited today to jump into our brand new series, More Than Money. Come on, we are in the year of more and we are keeping up with this theme of more and, and it is all that we are kind of talking about, the more that God has through us. And throughout this series, we're going to be talking about money, but so much more than money, right? When it comes to our finances, there's so much uh, more that goes beyond just dollars and cents. And that's why Jesus, yes, Jesus talked about money more than any other subject. Now, I want to tell you from the jump that this is not a giving series, okay? This is not a giving series. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine at the gathering, and I said, he, he was asking me, he said, what do you teaching this Sunday. I said, oh, we're excited. We're starting a new series, More Than Money. And he says, oh, I've been pastoring 15 years. I've never done a giving series. I said, me neither. This isn't a giving series. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so much more than giving, right? We're pre-wired. Even that pastor was pre-wired thinking, if we're talking about money, then we're talking about giving, right? We're, we're even preconditioned in this room. You think, oh, we're talking about money. What does the church want from me, but we want nothing from you. We want everything for you. Amen. And so as we talk about money, I want to just encourage you, don't be pre-wired and thinking, what does the church want from me? Because this is not a giving series. Come on, this isn't in my notes, but look at your neighbor and say, this is not a giving series. Come on. Because we want to understand, I believe there's power when we understand God's word, when we understand the power of money, it will unlock so much for us. We see, we have to understand that we have been blessed from the very beginning. Since the very first chapter in our Bible, God declared that we are blessed. Come on, look at your neighbor one more time and tell him, neighbor, 
I'm blessed. See, if I don't understand that I was blessed at the beginning, then I'm not going to be able to un unlock those blessings today. We have to understand that we were blessed at the very beginning. At the very beginning of time, we were blessed. Genesis 1.28 says, Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. A mandate from God. In the very first chapter of the Bible, be fruitful and multiply. Govern the earth. Some translations say rule over it. God's plan is to have money serve us, not us serve money. You see, when Christians fail to understand what God said and allow wrong thinking to stifle their expectations, the purposes of God are limited in your life. You see, the Bible promises us that we would have an abundance, uh, that we should have more in quality and quantity, that we will live over and above financial restriction. You see, money is a tool, and God's plan all along is for have, to have that tool go to work for us. Amen? Go to work for the kingdom of God. Ecclesiastes 10, 19 says, A party gives laughter, wine gives happiness, and money gives everything. You see, money says to debt, I can free you. Money says to vision, I can release you. Money says to time, I can direct you. Money says to need, I can help you. You see, there's so much noise out there online on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok that would tell you what you should be doing with your money. Well, I think we should look at what God says we should be doing with our money and uncover some common misconceptions of what people think about money. So today, we're going to unlock some money myths. Myth number one, money is not something we should focus on. Come on, people believe that money is not something that we should be focusing on in church, but arguably it's one of the world's most powerful agents. There's a reason why the enemy would love for us to not talk about money. Let me just share uh, these numbers with you when it comes to the Bible and money. 215 verses on faith. Come on, that's a lot of verses, right? 218 verses on salvation. 2,000 58 verses dealing with stewardship and money. Come on. 2,058 verses dealing with stewardship and money. So I'm just going to read about 2,000 of them with you. I got 21 minutes. Come on, and we want to sit here and say, why is the church talking about money? 2,058 verses on stewardship and money. Uh, see, we have a tendency as Christians to focus on what money can do for us instead of focusing on what money can do through us. Come on. We are trying to get money to our bank accounts and God's saying, I'm trying to get it through your bank account. Come on. Yeah. To you and through you. Amen. See, we must not become satisfied and settled with just meeting our own needs because uh, in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, it says, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. You see, if we are always praying to have our bills paid or have our needs met, then our praying becomes very me-centric. But Jesus taught us uh, his answer to a world in need. If we're going to embrace that mission and mandate, then our thinking must come in line with the thinking that we are blessed and God wants to bless us out of abundance. We like to talk uh, in church a lot about sowing, right? Come on, we're sowing seeds. We're sowing seeds into the kingdom, sowing seeds into God's kingdom, sowing seeds of love, sowing seeds of your time. But God isn't just a God of sowing. He's also a God of reaping. It is sowing and reaping. Someone say reaping. reaping. Come on, we like to celebrate the sowing, right? We like, man, I'm so thankful that you gave. Thank you for giving that gift. Man, look at that person. They're so generous, and we honor people that are generous, and we honor the generosity. But then when someone has nice stuff, you're like, oh, look at them. Look at them and all their nice, look at that nice car that they got. Oh, did you see that outfit that they're wearing? Uh, did you see that house that they're living in? No, they're just reaping because they were sowing. 
Our God is a God of sowing and he's a God of reaping. So if someone is abundantly blessed, then they've been sowing. It's sowing and it's reaping. Let's not just celebrate the sowing. Let's celebrate the reaping. Amen. Because God has promised us to harvest. God blessed us. God told us to be fruitful, to multiply. That means not only is it okay to be blessed, it's God's original design for us. But the problem is we believe myth number two, the Bible teaches us that money is evil. Come on, that's a myth. First Timothy 6.10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. It says the love of money is the root of all evil, not money itself. I guarantee you there are just as many poor people who love money as there are rich people who love money. Can I get an amen? Amen. How much you have or don't have has nothing to do with it. See, money is just paper, but it has value that the world has placed on it. If we start chasing money when we believe its value outweighs God's value. We were driving in the car the other day and we were uh, somehow talking about money. I don't even know how we were talking about money. My daughter Harper, who's five, uh, we were uh, just asking questions about like what you'd get and what you'd spend money on. And uh, we we said, Harper, would you rather have a a Barbie dream house uh, or a million dollars? Didn't even waver, flinch in two seconds. Barbie dream house. And her brothers are like, no, Harper, take the million dollars. Take the million dollars. And she's like, no, I want the Barbie dream house. And they're like, you don't understand. If you get the million dollars, you could buy a million Barbie dream house. It's like, I want the Barbie dream house. She was not going to be swayed by other people's opinions. She didn't care how her brothers valued the million dollars. In her heart, her dream was the Barbie dream house, and so she was not going to be deterred. I wonder how many times dreams that are in our heart, we've been deterred uh, by the pull of finance. Oh, man, I, I know God has given you that dream, but, but here's... $10,000. I know you want to spend more time with your family, but here's that promotion, right? Right. There's so many things that can pull us away from our dreams when we begin to start chasing the dollar. And we can be swayed by money outside, uh, in, in outside voices influencing us uh, to chase after money. But Mark 4.19 says, it is deceitfulness of riches that chokes the word and it becomes unfruitful. If in the wrong hands, the power of money can destroy, but it can also, uh, when it's in the right hands, be a tool to build God's kingdom. How many of you at home have a fireplace? We've got a few fireplace, right? We've got a fireplace. Now, if I were going to light a fire in your fireplace at home, it would have great ability. If you turn that fireplace on, you know, it's going to keep the house nice and warm. Uh, it would uh, make your house feel nice and cozy, right? It would be like, man, the, the, the fireplace makes the house feel nice and cozy. It brings light into the house, right? This fire can have great ability if you light it in the fireplace. Now imagine for a second, you decide to light that fire in your home. And instead of lighting it in the fireplace, uh, you light it on the living room carpet. Same fire, but depending on where it's lit, would have a lot different results. That, you'd be calling the, the fire department, you'd be evacuating, and that same fire would destroy everything in your life, all because of where it is placed. And, and so are you placing your money in your hands, or are you placing your money in God's hands. Because if you hold on to your money in your own hands and say, I got this, and it only has the ability to destroy. But if you say, God, I'm placing my finance in your hands, uh, then it can create something beautiful, something that provides light, something that provides warmth, warmth, all because of whose hands it's placed in. Jesus said it. He said, uh, you can't have two masters. You can't serve him and serve money. So is money serving you or are you serving money? Are you sacrificing God time for overtime? 
Are you sacrificing family time uh, for more uh, promotions? See, if we do these things, we are believing the lie of myth number three. Things would be different if I had more. Man, if I just had a little bit more, everything would just be so much better. We like to think if I only had more, I'd be satisfied. If I had more money, if I had more followers, if I had more influence, but we don't need more today to make a difference tomorrow. You see, our answer is found in the seed we possess today rather than the miracle we need for tomorrow. You see, it's in today's response that determines tomorrow's outcome. You see, every single farmer believes in the authority of the sown seed to produce a harvest. And we need to stop looking at our lack and start activating our current seed potential. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, what's your seed potential? Come on, we all have a seed potential. Uh, Scripture constantly reminds us that there's a harvest in every seed. Genesis 8.22, it says, As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. Come on, as long as the earth remains, our God is a God of seed, time, and harvest. We all have the power of a harvest in our hand. We just like to eat our seed instead of sow it. Come on, we got to begin to sow our seed. If we want to be uh, reaping a harvest, we have to be sowing our seed. See, when Jesus sent his disciples out to pray for people, if you read this in the Gospels a few different times, he sends them out and he says, take nothing with you. And we can interpret that and say, man, see, I don't need uh, anything. I don't need resource. God will sustain me. Uh, but uh, he was trying to get them to realize, hey, you need to place your trust in me. You need to place everything, uh, your reliance on me. Everyday Christianity requires that we learn how to trust God and live by faith. And there will be times in our life where you're asking God, where is the blessing, right? God, I need, where is the blessing? I'm struggling. And and he's saying, you've got to trust me. You got to have faith in my word. Uh, These seasons, uh, when we feel like we need more, that's always a time to create greater depth of relationship and dependence on God. You see, Mark 10, 29 says it like this. He said, yes, Jesus replied, I assure you that everyone who has given up a house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for my sake and for the good news will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and property, along with persecution. And in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. You see, Jesus did not preach a model of scarcity. He modeled a life of going without so that you and I could step into the promise of abundance, providing an answer to the world that we live in. And it doesn't matter where you find yourself out today. You don't have to stay there. But change begins with a biblical understanding mixed with an obedient response. Come on, we got to understand the word and we have to respond to the word. We have to go into this week, this month, this year with the revelation that we were created to be fruitful. Amen. We were created to multiply and that we were created for more. You see, sometimes God... Sometimes God does call us to go without for a greater purpose. But righteous living is not about small living. It's about surrendered living, which is in God's hands will never be small. You see, God is like a river, not a pool. His resource is not limited. There's only so much water in a pool, and our God is not a pool. He's a river. There is always so much more that will be flowing from our God. If the enemy can keep us small-minded in our thinking, he's going to keep us small-minded in our kingdom impact. But remember, Jesus taught us to pray. He taught us to pray, your kingdom come to earth as it is in heaven. Do you guys think for a second that heaven is a place of lack? No. Then we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven where they treat gold like it's dust. Like I'm just going to dust my bookshelf off the gold, right? Uh, that is not a place of lack. And so when we call and say your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, heaven is not static. It's dynamic. It is always growing. It is always evolving. We will never arrive at a destination. Uh, let's never park where we find ourselves today. Our future is filled with so much more. You see, if I don't activate my ability and responsibility in my kingdom calling, I'm going to miss out on all the more that God has for me. You see, there's another response that always goes hand in hand with thinking, if I only had more, things would be different. And that's our final myth this morning. Myth number four, I'm stuck and there's no way out. Come on, has anybody ever felt that way? Uh, you don't have to raise your hand, come on. But I know uh, that many of you have felt that way, that you're stuck and there's no way out. Man, I'm just never going to get enough. I'm never going to uh, make it through. I'm, I'm just always stuck uh, in, the, in this place. And uh, I think a vast majority of the church has had this feeling that they can't escape because of a a lack or because of a debt, but uh, we can't afford uh, to allow the patterns of our paths, our past to determine our pathway for our future. See, if we truly believe that God has called us and that God is able to do all things, that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly, right, then that means that our divine principles, they, there are divine principles that can be released in every one of us to have financial breakthrough. You see, one of these principles is found in Deuteronomy 8.18. It says, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. I think this is an important principle. And if you're taking notes, write this down. God does not get wealth for you. He empowers you to get wealth. God does not get wealth for you. He empowers you to get wealth. I think for far too long, uh, we all we are doing in our ability is going to the mailbox looking for a check from God. And God is saying, that is not the only pathway that I have for you to get wealth. Your, I have given you tools. I have given you passions. I have given you desires. I have placed things in your heart to create wealth for you, not give wealth to you. Uh, what pathway does he have for you to create wealth? You have to remember, you have to use the key that is in your hand. Matthew 16, 19 says it like this, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. When Amber and I were out of town uh, this week at the gathering uh, at home, the deadbolt on my front door broke. It broke in the locked position, meaning that no one could come in or come out from the front door. And they had to use the garage all week. And there was this part on the inside of the deadbolt that was broken that you couldn't even see. And so then because of that broken piece, they no longer had access through the front door that way. Maybe this morning you feel like there's something on the inside of you that's out of alignment. Something on the inside of you uh, that's broken. Maybe it's a broken way uh, of thinking about uh, your finances of thinking about uh, being blessed and uh, a broken way of thinking that is not has allowed you to gain access to all that God has for you. See, you have every key in your hand to unlock every lock, but until you activate the right key for the right door, then the door remains shut. That's why in this church today, it can be filled with so many different types of people. You can all be sitting under the same teaching, yet producing very different results and fruit in your lives. While some will experience the breakthrough and power of God uh, by responding to the same word, others can hear that same word and just have a ho-hum attitude. Oh, it's just not for me. I'm just not going to receive it. It just will never be my time. I'm never going to break through. I'm never going to have enough. I'm never going to have more. It's always going to be so-and-so. Why does God always bless so-and-so? Why are they always getting the blessing? When am I ever going to have enough? When am I ever going to break through? When am I ever going to get that 
raise? When am I ever going to get that promotion? And it's always, when am I? When am I? When am I? When am I? And until we begin to shift our attitude and say, God, whatever you have for me, Come on, I'm going to steward what you've placed in my hand. Today, we have an opportunity to steward what God has placed in our hand. God is always going to build his church based on the revelation of who he is. So we have to look past our past and fix our eyes on Jesus and what he has promised us and walk that out in our lives, and it will make all the difference. We have to begin to realize that we have the keys to the kingdom in our hands. Come on, we have the keys to the kingdom uh, in our hands to unlock the principles of God's word in our life that he wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to multiply. He wants us to govern the earth. And it starts in our today's response in what you have in your hand. I've said this maybe a thousand times, but I'll say it again. You have everything now in your hand to achieve what's in your heart. It starts today. It doesn't start when you have something tomorrow. It, it, it doesn't start when you, when you get the job. Uh, It doesn't start when you think you have enough. It starts today. Being obedient to what God has placed in your hand. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that today you just help us unlock the principles of your word in our lives. You help us uh, with the revelation that you want us blessed, that you want us favored, that you want us to have so much more so that it can go to us and through us so that we could be your hands and feet to those around us, that we can make an eternal impact in our city, in our county, in our state, and in our nation. Father God, we thank you that money is not something that we should be afraid of. Father God, that that you have called us to it so that we can steward it, Father God, that we can use it to make a kingdom impact. Maybe you're in here today and you've never had an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. You've never had that opportunity to come into a relationship with a father who loves you completely right where you're at. Today could be the day of salvation for you. Today could be the day where you go all into a life-giving, life-fulfilling relationship with a father who's not holding your sins against you. He doesn't care what you did last week, last month, last year. He wants to wrap his arms around you today and tell you how much he loves you and how much he wants to be in relationship with you. The Bible says that two things are required, an open heart, and an open mouth. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you shall be saved. And three incredible things will happen. Your sins will be forgiven. Heaven will be your eternal home and God will become your father and will always be with you. So if that's you today and you desire that relationship, all I'm gonna ask you to do right now in this moment is simply raise your hand. Simply raise your hand up high and say, I'm saying yes to Jesus. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Come on, I see you over there, that hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand right there. Come on, hands going up all over of people saying yes to Jesus. Thank you for that hand right there. Well, what we're going to do, church, is we're going to pray. All of us together, repeat after me. Say it bold, say it loud. Say, dear God, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, save me and make me new. My life is not my own. I give it all to you. Fill me with your spirit so I could follow you. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love. And I thank you for my new life in you. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody said amen. Amen, would you stand with me and let's worship our Father together, amen. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name Stands above them all, above all thrones, and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name it stands above them all, and the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries. 
yes to Christ this morning. So many hands raised. God is so good. You know, all of heaven is rejoicing for that decision you made to follow Christ. You know, after service, we'd love for you to stop by our lobby. We have a bell. We'd love for you to ring in and just see all your church family cheer you on for that best decision you made to follow Christ. Our team would also love to give you a t-shirt. It says part of the family since you joined the greatest family here on earth. Amen. Amen. Hey, also we have our prayer team out there. Uh, We just love our prayer team. They get here every uh, early, every Sunday. Come on, they're prayed up, they're filled up, they're fired up, and they want to add their faith with your faith, whatever you're in need of. Maybe you're just in need of a little encouragement. Come on, they want to encourage you, uh, uplift your faith. And so if you're in need of prayer, uh, we'd love for you to stop by uh, our prayer center after service. Come on, have your blessed you're in church today. Amen. Amen. Well, let us bless you as we get ready to go. Romans 15, 13 says, I pray that God, who is the source of hope, will fill us completely with joy and peace because we place our trust in him. Then we will overflow with the confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We love you guys.